you're going to go looking for wildlife, you might as well go big. They're huge. Bison are the largest land mammal in North America, with the adults weighing in at about one ton each. This herd roams the Raymond Wildlife Area, about 30 miles east of Flagstaff, and this group of visitors are part of an outreach program by Game and Fish to connect people with local wildlife. The Game and Fish Department is mandated to manage wildlife for all the people in the state. And so uh, people that hunt, people that fish, people that feed birds in their backyards, or people that never even look at the birds, uh, we're managing wildlife for all those people. We're not just a hunting and fishing organization. And uh, by getting people involved with wildlife and uh, getting them out, getting them connected, realizing that those wildlife are their wildlife, uh, I think we're, we're instilling a sense of ownership. And, and we want to build that, we want to foster that. Because we're working for all the people in the state, it's, under, it's important that they understand that these resources are those, theirs too, not just the hunters and fishermen. And uh, by becoming invested in it, by helping to manage it, by being active, by being interested in it, they're helping to conserve it. About 30 people signed up for this workshop, which began with a little history and biology lesson, such as what is the difference between a bison and a buffalo? So what is the difference? Okay, so true buffalo are only found in Africa and Asia. They're known as the Cape and Water Buffalo. Versus American bison are only found in North America. They're very distinct animals from true buffalo, as you can see you know, from their heads and the, just the body configuration, the horn configuration. The name came over what they believe what I was found, found online from the early American settlers. Most of them were immigrants. They called them buffalo, <laughs> which I'm not sure which nationality that was, but it was the name that they referred to from the, the African and Asian animals that they closely resembled that in, in their mind. So they call them buffalo, and that's just what came down through the years. In Arizona, bison are considered a native species within their historic range, but the ancestors of this herd first came to the North Kaibab in 1905 when Charles Buffalo Jones brought 35 head to the area to try and crossbreed them with cattle. The experiment failed and the animals eventually drifted down to the Kaibab's East Range and took up residence in House Rock Valley. In 1923, with only 57 bison remaining, Arizona's state game warden negotiated for the state to buy the animals, and in the 1940s, part of the growing herd was moved to the department's newly acquired Raymond Ranch. After the presentations, it was time to head out and try to see some bison. Ordinarily, they could be anywhere on this sprawling 15,000-acre property, making them very difficult to find. Right now, we have a unique experience because during a, a very narrow window of time, the animals are brought into a big holding pen, so they're not disrupted uh, by a lot of activity that's going on this time of year. And so they're in a relatively small spot for a relatively short period of time. And so this looked like an excellent opportunity to get people out to actually see bison, get a chance to get a good look at one, get close to them, and that's what we wanted to do. So we took advantage of this unique opportunity. And since this will be happening more or less on an annual basis, we look forward to doing many of these in the future. Visitors had several opportunities to see the bison. First, spotting scopes were set up on a hill overlooking a huge pasture where the bison had settled. Oh, he just turned his head. He's talking to the other one. Then, a few at a time, riding in game and fish trucks that the bison were used to, they were driven in for a closer look. Still, there was no guarantee that after the first group drove by, the bison would stay put. But today, they were in a cooperative mood. How is it? Awesome. Lots of people love wildlife and um, a lot of times they don't know quite how to make it work out, how to get out in the field, how to find them or any of the biology and ecology and that's where we can help to act as guides to get folks out to enjoy the wildlife resources they have in their own backyard. Participants paid $35 to attend this workshop which also included a lunch of, what else, bison burgers. 
The wildlife watching programs the department's sponsoring now with this uh, with this new effort, uh, a lot of these are cost recovery programs. Many of them are free, but some of them we charge a nominal fee for. And what we're really trying to do is break even. And on those rare occasions where we actually come out a little ahead, we want to reinvest that money into wildlife watching programs. It's not often you get to be up close and personal with bison. Yeah. Notice I said bison, not buffalo. I have learned something today. <laughs> um, I've always loved wildlife and the game and fish have given an opportunity for us to get up not only just to see them but to learn a lot more about them how why they're here how they got here what about is going to be happening to keep them here